it's Mandy from Little People Nutrition. On today's episode of Little People Cooking, we're going to Italia, to Italy, and we're going to be making our own little individual mini pizzas. Now, the best thing about this cooking class is we're not just topping a pizza, we're actually going to make our own little individual doughs, our little, own little individual pizza bases. We're going to make the dough from scratch, which is so delicious and really gives this recipe and pizzas the oomph that you might be looking for. This recipe is great for lunchtime or dinner or afternoon tea, but it does require a little bit of time for the dough to be able to rise and before you can actually top it. So if you wanted to make it for lunch, maybe think about making it mid-morning, or if you wanted to make it for dinner, maybe make it in the afternoon. This recipe is great for kindergarten year one and onwards. If you wanted to do this class for maybe preschoolers, it's probably best to have your dough already made or perhaps use like a pit of bread. Now, before we go down to our stations, have you washed your hands? Tick. All right, let's go and have a look at what ingredients and small ways and equipment we need to cook our own individual pizzas today. All right, here we are down at our stations. What you need to have for you, just you, is a piece of alfoil, a bowl, a cup, a tablespoon, and a teaspoon. All the rest of the ingredients will go on the communal table or are used by other people as well. For the food ingredients, we have flour, we have oil, we have sugar, we have yeast, and we have water. So we've got everything here to be able to make pizza dough. So let's get going. First, we need to get our water. This is warm water, which, so you can touch it, it's called lukewarm. You want it to be a nice warm temperature so that the yeast can hang out and play in it and do its job. So what we need is we need four tablespoons of water. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Once we've got our water in there, we need a pinch of sugar. Just a tiny, tiny wee pinch. Just a sprinkle. And the reason we need the sugar is because we're going to put some yeast in. And yeast is a tiny microorganism that loves to eat sugar and it turns that sugar into alcohol, which you, then you can make things like beer. And then it also turns it into carbon dioxide. Or I like to say it likes to eat sugar and fart out gas. So we put a wee amount of yeast in there. So what that yeast, and give it a wee stir, what's going to happen is that yeast will turn that sugar into gas, into bubbles, and then bubbles will form up. And those bubbles help start, we're just starting the uh, process of being able to ferment some of the sugar in the flour to make our dough rise. That's already started and you'll see it will come up with a nice frothy layer. So we'll leave that water, yeast and sugar there, and we'll get on to our flour. Here I've got plain flour, and I'm going to put four tablespoons into my bowl. See, they're nice and heaped there. Two, three, four. You always need a little bit of flour left over, just in case it gets sticky. Now, I've made a little well in the middle. I fell down the well. <laughs> now I'm going to put a teaspoon of oil. I like to put an olive oil in mine because a lot of the Italians use olive oil. And the oil will help with the stretching of the dough and the smoothness of it. Uh, it's, it helps with its functionality. So I'll give that a little bit of a stir around with my finger while we're waiting for our yeast. To play here. It's got a slight little film on there. You can leave that for a little bit longer. The reason we use warm water, I think I mentioned, is because yeast likes that temperature. If the water is too hot, the yeast will die. It's very, very sensitive yeast. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly pour this in and mix it in. We just want to make sure, like I said, depending on the weather, it might or might not be very sticky. 
little bit at a time and I'm just using my finger to give it a little mix around and it will, it will get sticky. So get rid of it, get rid of it, that's it. <laughs> okay, Randy, find the little baubles there. We're slowly bringing it together. When we cook, it's not about who finishes first. It's about enjoying the process and just getting in there and feeling the ingredients. Almost the slower you go, the better sometimes. So we're bringing that together. You can see that you're starting to make little dough balls with our fingers. Cute little dough balls. I reckon we're nearly done there. And I've used all of that water actually. But yours might be different depending on the flour you've got or the temperature that's in your classroom. So put that to the side. Put our spoons to the side. We don't need them anymore. So I'm just rolling that around to pick up all the flour in my bowl. Oh, it feels good. Got a nice little dough ball here which is ridiculously cute. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna knead it. Not with our knees, <laughs> but with our hands. So we're gonna put a little bit of flour on our thing there, just so it doesn't stick. And if it is a little bit sticky, my dough's a little bit sticky there, so it just helps work in some flour. And we can knead it. So we're helping give the dough elasticity and getting it to metabolize with the yeast. So mine's getting a bit sticky there again, so I'll put a little bit more flour there. This is the good bit. You gotta knead it, baby. You gotta work it, baby. Pushing it down, looking up around. Here we go, hey, hey. Now. I'm gonna leave that one now. I'm just gonna tease it out. I'm gonna make a little dough ball. So you can see here, I make like a little thing there. And then we tuck it in just to make a cute little dough ball. If you had more dough, if you're making this for your family, you would make bigger dough balls. Oh, he's so cute. I'm gonna get my bowl back, pop him in there. Put a little bit more oil again, just to put on the surface. And I'm going to just coat him a little bit so that when he grows, he doesn't stick too much to the side. So our little dough balls in there, and then we're going to get out our foil, and we're going to cover it. Then we're going to place our dough ball with its cover in an area that's not windy, where it's kind of warmish, and leave it for about 45 minutes to an hour for it to grow. While we're waiting for our dough to rise, we'll get our ingredients that we're going to put on top of the pizza ready. I like to use vegetarian ingredients when I can, just because we all need a bit more vegetables in our day. So you have a platter of different ingredients. You can have things like pineapple or ham or such as you like as well. But today I'm going to use some zucchini, a little bit of mushroom, some capsicum and a couple of olives. So I'm just going to cut a few slices of, of capsicum. Tell you about that. I won't need all of this, so I'll just uh, cut half of that off and put it back for someone else to use. I'm going to do little strips of zucchini. Always keep your knife pointed down and on your, on your table. You don't want it pointed up so it doesn't poke your neighbour in the eye. Got some zucchini and a bit of mushroom. Probably only do half of the mushroom as well. You can have them small, you can have them largely cut, whatever floats your boat. I don't need to dice my olives up, they're good to go. Then when our dough's ready, I've got mine over here. Here we are, I'll take off the lid. You can see that it's slightly rised a little bit. Not by much, but that's okay. I'm actually going to keep this our foil because I need it for when we bake. I'll put a little bit of flour. Might even just roll it on here to make it easier actually. A bit of flour on the base so it doesn't stick even while it's cooking. Just give it a nice floury base. 
put that there, sort of stretch it out a little bit. Might need a bit of flour on top as well in case it's still a bit sticky. Got my rolling pin. Move that bowl out of the way. You don't need her anymore. Just turn her around and roll her nice and flat. Oh, she looks a doozy. And this is a perfect size for one person. Just make sure she's nice and flowery underneath so she doesn't stick. Oh, fussy hands. I'm gonna get a bit of tomato paste here. You could use different kind of sauces on the bottom. Sometimes you could use uh, like garlic and olive oil. You could use pesto. You could use a creamy sauce. Take her out all the way to the edge. Oh, she looks so beautiful. I like to put my cheese on the base, a little bit of cheese. So I've got about a tablespoon to put on the base. And I'm gonna put my ingredients in a pretty pattern. <laughs> Got some capsicum again, some zucchini, and my mushies. Oh, doesn't she look beautiful? All those lovely colours. I'm going to put a couple of olives on top as well. I adore olives. And I'm going to put a bit more cheese on top. You can have a base of communal ingredients to be able to share if you're doing it in the class. Oh, doesn't she look cute? I love her. Then I'm going to get the baking tray. And because you've got it on the apple, you could write your name on it so you know whose is who. And I'm going to carefully pick her up and pop her down on the tray. And I'm going to put her in about a 180 to 200 degree oven. Once it's all delicious and browned on top, the cheese is melted. Get an adult to take it out of the oven because this can be very hot. Then we're going to put that down. And then you can use a pizza cutter or you might need to get an adult to use a proper sharp knife rather than the kid friendly knives. And we can cut it. Ooh. Oh, she is delicious. Mmm, just fantastic. Enjoy.